Man, I have become reacquainted with words like donkey, marshmallows, other types of food, and so forth. Needless to say, he's a, he's a treat. Conventions wouldn't be conventions at the ABCA without this man being a part of it. He'll make you laugh till you cry, motivate you till you fly. The enlightenment with John that we get by being a part of this game, in my opinion, is what we should all stand for. With great honor, I give you John Scalinas. trust on your side, you got a winner. Did you hear me? I'm looking for someone I can trust. Because when you got trust on your side, you got a good hitter. And I don't think I'm an escape you out of Camarillo State Hospital <laughs> in California. I better do a job here because the guys are responsible for me being here. That Dato, that Bobo, that Reichel, Biden, that Dutch friend will be all over me. I'm going to talk on trust, people. I got a hand out here you can pick up afterwards. And when you got trust on your side, like I said, you got a winner. And a winner equals team chemistry. You guys are always talking about team chemistry. Well, this is the way I feel about it over the years. You got to have some winners. And what makes up trust? You notice I got in here T after the first T. Thankful. Guys, thankful for being on the ball club. Being on the ball club. You know, guy, guy, guy moaning and groaning all the time. That guy's not thankful. Then I got R, reliable. The guy's reliable. He's going to be reliable to make the ball club look good on the field. He's going to be reliable on making the ball club look good on the campus. He's going to be reliable on making the ball club look good in the classroom. And in the community, that guy's going to be reliable. This makes up trust. U stands for understanding. He understands what's going on, the lessons involved that he's learning playing the game. He understands you as the coach, what you're trying to do, what's your philosophy. He understands. S sincere. Hey, he's not a phony. No hypocrisy. Okay? And then truthful. The guy's true to the ball club. You can depend on it. True. Now, here's the point in here. You coaches, number one, you got to get the trust of the ball players. Okay? And then you got to get some ball players that can be trusted. you got to have enough, which I call the winners. Now, I've said this before. Hey, you can't get all great ability. All right? If 
if you got a guy, there's three types of players. You got the athlete, you got the competitor, and you got the winner. Now, in my definition here, the athlete's that guy that's got outstanding ability. But you don't know when the guy's going to perform. Might be today, might be next week. But if the guy performs, hey, that's a good one. Now, if that guy's a winner, hey, you got a blue chipper. You got a blue chipper. If the guy's got great ability and is a winner. The competitor. Now, the definition I'm using here, the competitor, and you've seen him, all he's doing is competing for himself. One of those I-itis guys. I, me, mine, what's in it for me? That's a competitor. The winner. The winner, now get this. He's the guy, could come from the coach, but if you got it in the ranks, and you can develop it to a degree, if you what? Work at it. The winner is the guy that gets that athlete. Come on, let's go get him today. He'll get that guy to play. And the winner will get that Iitis guy, that guy that's for himself, to work for the ball club. That's the winner. Now, let me get something straight again. I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again for you guys that didn't hear. The winner does not have to have ability. Did you hear me? Did you hear me on that? Let me tell you a true story. Some of these guys remember. I had a bat boy. Now, get this. Jay Ruffner, his daughter, I had, him, I had her in a class. She said, gee, I got my little brother really likes baseball. Can he come out and be the bat boy? I said, sure. And the kid was one of those cerebral palsy. I'm not kidding you. I'm nothing funny, but this is where the kid would walk. Love baseball. Come on, be the bat boy. And you know what? I don't know, some of you, maybe six years I had that kid. Hey, a winner! He was a winner! Sat back, hey, I didn't tell them guys nothing. They'd look at him. Hey, they'd play catch with him, hustling, getting those bats out there all the time. Hey, what a deal that guy did for the ball club. Well, it'll make you cry. He was a winner. Didn't even play. Now look for winners, you guys. Look for them. Because they're out there. I never cut anybody. You know why? <laughs> I cut a winner. They drop out by themselves. They drop out by themselves. So, hey, listen. When you got this, hey, when you got crushed on your side again, you've got stability. That's what you're trying to get. We all know you got to have ability, people. And you guys have got some great speakers here, and you're picking up points on how to make them better ball players. That's great. But for crying out loud, take some time. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Talk about trust. Talk about it. See if they can get it. And some of these guys will. You'd be surprised. And you guys are the ones that are the leaders. You're the leaders, okay? You're the leaders on that deal. But I wanted to get this point across in here. Hey, you got, hey. On all of you got a hitter. You're going to call this guy out of the, hey, McGee. Get up there and hit for Scullinus, will ya? Who's his that? Who, me? You want that guy? Can you trust that guy with a bat? Forget it. You gotta work on trust, people. You gotta work on trust. But I'm telling you, if you can get that within the ball club, then you're gonna have that camaraderie and you're gonna have that team chemistry. I'm not saying you're gonna win them all. Come on. We 
know you got to have that talent, but I'm telling you, you're going to have that team chemistry, and you're going to have good camaraderie on the ball club. All right. Now, walking around here with home plate. <laughs> Hey, Rod, don't send me to Camarillo. That's, hey. This has to do with trust, too. Do you guys know that? Has to do with trust. Now, let me ask you a question. Why do they call it home plate? Why don't they call it the fourth base? You got first base, second base, third base. Then why don't they say fourth base or the scoring base? Why do they call it home plate? I'm going to tell you why. Not tell you, I'm going to show you. Are you ready? <laughs> Can you guys see out there in the bleachers? to me. You better listen to me. Home plate represents the home. But also, now you got to bear with me, you guys. Hey, represents the church. Wait till I'm coming to the deal here. Represents the school. Represents you as a coach. Represents your ball players. Represents the eight lessons of baseball. Bring them all up. It represents fear. Represents failure, represents frustration, all happen at home plate. Embarrassment at home plate. Represents a slump at home plate. Represents adjustments, you better adjust at home plate. And represents control. That pitcher can't get the ball over the plate, you send him to Siberia. Well, that hitter better get control up at that plate. Okay? Represents all these. Now, let me get some point across, people. The big problem. Well, now, first of all, hey, any Little League coaches in the house? How wide is home plate in Little League? 17 inches. How wide is it in Pony League? 17 inches. How wide is it in high school? 17 inches. How wide is it in college? 17 inches. Any minor league managers in the house? How wide is it in the minor leagues? 17 inches. Any big league managers in the house? How wide is it in the big leagues? 17 inches. What is it trying to tell us? Hey, this is important. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> okay. For kids, teenagers, young adults, adults, over-the-hill guys like me, certain standards, certain values, Certain rules stay the same. Did you hear me? They stay the same. One of the big problems. One of the big problems. 
Well, hey, you guys don't believe me on 17 inches. Hey, I, we got a guest here, Jerry Dale, ex-National League umpire. Hey, let me say something about Jerry Dale. The only umpire in the history of baseball that's got a doctorate degree and the only umpire in the history of baseball that has umpired in both leagues. Where's Jerry? Is he here? Where are you? Jerry Dale, where are you? Stand up a minute. We'll tell you about 17 inches. All right, people. Here's the problem. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up, why am I bringing this up? You know why I'm bringing this up? You guys can do something about it. If you're one of those nose pickers, forget it. But you guys can do something about it. That's why I'm bringing it up. I'm talking to the key people. You guys are key people. You're the leaders, and you get them ball players. Influence. Hey, influence. You guys know I'm big on influence. You, hey, I, like I've told you before, hey, a guy's the way, a guy's a jerk because he's been influenced by what? Jerks. <laughs> True. Guy's got class. Been influenced by somebody that's got class. Don't let anybody kid you. Don't let anybody kid you. So the point is here, you got to get your ball players, hey, to make the ball club influence the other students on campus. Why not? Why not? Be a good influence on the rest of the students. Crying out loud. Hey, you guys know the suicide rate? Teenagers sky high. Your ball players can help them because they can what? The other students can trust them. Trust them. That's why you got to get that point across. All right. Now here's the problem, and like I say, you guys can do something about it. Huh? Here's the problem. Chuck, I got Chuck Belk here. He used to be with me many years. Did a great job. He was a coach. Now he's with that Christian International Outreach. You guys want to know more about it? Support it. Send ball players to it. You see Chuck. Now here's the problem. Hold it up, Chuck. Walk around. Show him. You guys see the problem? Can you guys figure out the problem? You don't have to have a PhD for crying out loud. Look at it. We're widening home plate. Huh? The home. Even the church, I hate to say it, some churches, you guys go speak to these churches, you guys do a great job speaking, speak to the church, hey, tell them to what? Stay at 17 inches. Don't widen it out, that's what they're doing. Some of the schools, widen it out there in L.A. for crying out loud, they're passing out condoms. <laughs> Teaching these guys control. <laughs> hey, hey, well, am I telling these guys a song and dance? Hey, do that. You got a picture for crying out loud? Can't get the ball over the plate? What are you gonna tell them? Hey, Larry, don't worry about it. I'm gonna widen the whole plate for you. <laughs> Siberia. <laughs> Control, people. Now, this is the point. Now, there's where we're having problems, people. Widening home plate. <laughs> you know, nobody's teaching control anymore. And hey, this is a, hey, I don't give a kick. The greatest game is baseball. And I'll tell you why. The only game, they can talk all they want about football, basketball, soccer. <laughs> hey, baseball is the only game. Now, here's the, hey, professional baseball, right? You got to get those guys on the ball. 
They got to, hey, we talk about it's the family game. Why is it the family game? Go one step further, because it, it's the only game that parallels everyday living. The only game. You learn to handle fear, failure, frustration, and all that. Make adjustments and control. That's what the game is all about. That's why it's a great game, people. Gee whiz. So, hey, 17 inches, 17 inches, because if you don't keep it at 17 inches, this is what happens. Show them, Chuck. Take a look at that. Huh? Hey, dark days ahead. <laughs> I don't give a kick if you're talking about the home, if you're talking about the church, if you're talking about the school, if you're talking about you as a coach, if you're talking about your ball players. Dark days ahead. Now you guys have got the, hey, you got the reins. Do a good job of the reins. Okay? Work on that influence, people. Gee whiz. Hey. What? Let me ask you coaches one question here, and I'm going to shut up. Let me ask you a question. You answer it. What will it profit you as a coach if you gain all the baseball knowledge in the world? You win all baseball games in the world but you don't influence your ball players in the right direction huh what will it profit you you guys you answer that now, we've got some great coaches here but a lot of ball games and I know the guys I've been involved with boy they've been a great influence on their ball players and I know a lot of you guys have been a great influence and that's what it's all about Hey, you're out there to win for crying, why keep score? We were out there to win. But I'm telling you, don't forget influence. Let me leave you with three, three things here. But first of all, I got to introduce my wife. Hey, my third base coach for 45 years never second guessed me. Raise your hand, honey. Where are you, Helen? Never second guessed me. Tell your ball players to get, a, get themselves a good third base coach. All right, and they're in good shape. Let me leave you with three things. I'm going to wind it up, okay? Number one, stay at 17 inches. Did you hear me? Stay at 17 inches. Number two, four most important words, take care of yourself. And number three, five most important words, surround yourself with good people. Number one, being the Almighty. Hey, you're in great shape. There could be a problem. Huh? If you can't trust that AD or the president, huh, you might have a problem. But I'm telling you, hey, those three, you keep those three things. And let me say one other thing. Hey, get the point across, you ball, you coaches. And wind it up here. Hey. How many guys are going to make it to the big leagues? Huh? Like the good book says, many are called, but few are chosen. That's why your job, prepare them for everyday living. That's your job. Prepare them for everyday living. And you're in great shape. Thank you. God bless you, okay?